Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thousands of memories are created and captured in each photo taken on your magical vacation. We proudly present Capturing Magic, where we help those moments live on forever. Hey everyone, welcome to Capturing Magic, where we are using technology to create and capture magic memories. This is episode six recorded on Monday, November 12th. And you can find more tips, tools, and notes for this show at capturingmagic.me. I'm Steph C, and I will be your host today. I'm also joined by my co-host, Brittany Lovett, who can be found at britishdesigns.com, where she has digital scrapbooking supplies. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Steph. And then we are also joined today by Becky Silk of the Disney Sisters, who is back with us today. We're so excited. Hi, Becky. Hello, everyone. Hi, girls. Thanks for having me. We're excited to have you back. It was so much fun to have all of you here last time. And so we needed a little a little dose of the Disney Sisters. (laughs) Oh, thank you. (laughs) So, and each of us, we need to note that each of us are recording this show in our mouse ears in honor of the Disney sisters. That's right. You guys are honorary Disney sisters today. Yay! Yay. (laughs) Perfect. Okay, so our discussion topic for today is all about video. Because, Becky, I know you do lots of videoing when you're at the parks. Mm -hmm. And Brittany and I haven't done as much as we would like to. And so we had some questions for you on things that we can do and maybe shouldn't do. So, first off, what? tell us what kind of equipment you use when you're videoing at the parks. Okay, so um, contrary to popular belief, we are not super high tech and we have a flip cam. Well, actually, we've got about probably six between us. Um, Do you remember the flip cameras? Yes. So I don't know if um, many people still have those rolling around, but um, that's what we use mainly. And then we also use our iPhones. That's easy enough. That's super easy. And that, you know, it makes it. Um, doable. And I think that people will remember to do them if it's just in your phone. If you're already using maybe your iPhone for photos, then you can just um, flip that little toggle to video and then you're set. And here's a real important note though. When you're taking a photo, you hold your camera for the most part up and down. When you're taking a video, you absolutely want to turn it side to side. And tell us why that is. Um, when you're, if you upload it to YouTube or whatever, it's just the direction of the video. It'll be tall and skinny. It'll be um, v- vertical, and you want the picture to be horizontal, like the shape of your television or the shape of your computer screen, or mm-hmm. you know, yeah. So, believe me, we've done many a video just by use being used to holding the flip camera. You're holding that up up and down, you know, and then you hold the camera the right direction. So then when you're taking the video, you really have to remember to flip it on its end or on its side. Okay. So what other tips and things have you learned, uh, as you've been videoing through the parks? Okay. Well, let's see. Okay. Well, if you do have a flip camera, um, I think our number one mistake that we still continue to make is make sure that it's on. (laughs) <laughs> and honestly, I mean, this could be any, any camera yeah. or phone, like you push the button, you know, you pushed it, but if you're not looking at it and making sure that that record button's on or the red lights on, I mean, I can't tell you how many things that we have held the camera still for five minutes, seven minutes, we think we're doing it. And then we hit it, we hit the button again, and then it says record. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> You you can't believe that that just happened, but I'm telling you, it happens fairly often to us. So I've had that happen many times in podcasting too, unfortunately. (laughs) Right? You swear you've pushed the button and then I don't know what happens. It just doesn't record or I don't know. Yeah. Yep. It recorded the beginning when we were just chatting, didn't record the show part, and then recorded the end when we were telling each other goodbye. Had it happen. Yep. (laughs) Yeah, unfortunately, mm-hmm. unfortunately, what about because uh, one of the things that I have a hard time with is when I'm doing video, I still laugh and whatever, but the sound, <laughs> 
So you can hear me laughing, (laughs) you know what I mean? It's really loud. Well, that is another thing that I actually had written down to talk about because, um, we try to really limit our voice on video. So whoever's holding the camera, we try not to talk. We try to have some of the other family members talk and narrate maybe, or, I mean, obviously if there's something that you want to say or something, then go for it, but just know that your voice is going to be the loudest (laughs) and probably you'll think obnoxious, you know, in all the videos. So, um, the other thing I do, like if I want to say something or yell something out, I'll like really turn my head away from it. I'll hold the camera, you know, still where it is and I'll like lean over to the side or, you know what I mean? I know it sounds crazy, but yeah, that That makes it. So the sound isn't quite as loud. That's a good idea. Yeah. Cause I mean, just when you think about it, you're the closest to the microphone. So of course you're going to be the loudest. The other really great thing that we've learned, um, this is probably the number one tip of the show. (laughs) There's something called a monopod, monopod, M O N O. And then I think it's two words, P O D. Uh Um, this has the attachment. It just screws onto your, the bottom of any camera. Um, and it, it's just one leg. So think of a tripod, but this is just one. So it full, it looks like a cane or a walking stick or something. And it telescopes in and out. So it can fold, um, up into like a little umbrella size and it has a strap, a carrying case with a strap. So this monopat pod, you can just literally open it, you know, in a snap and set it on the ground for some stability mm-hmm. and your videos aren't going to be as shaky. So that's a big one. It's a really great idea. So are you using that for your iPhone too? No, they, it won't attach to the iPhone, but there is an attachment for the iPhone that will attach to it. Okay. So you can, you know, you can, um, actually Jessica has that attachment. I've never used it with my phone, but I know she has it and that it'll work. So, um, yeah. And you know, we bought our monopod at Best Buy and I know you can get them online and I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure you can get them at a variety of stores. Yeah. So it's not a specific brand that you use or anything? No. Okay. Mm-mm. That's a good but, tip. Yeah. That changed our world. <laughs> Cause who wants to carry a, a tripod every, anywhere, yeah. everywhere? No, that's not going to happen, but you can throw that monopod in the stroller when you're headed to Disneyland or Disney world, you know, and, and just whip it out quick. If you, if you've got a parade or, you know, the Dapper dance that you want to record, if your kid's dancing while Dapper Dan's singing, like you've got to get that on video, you know? Right. So is the flip cam, um, does it have an, I've never used one. I know of them. I've never used one myself, but does it have like, you know, the image stabilization that, like a video camera would have? I think it's built in. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then it, the attachment to put it on any kind of a tripod or monopod is on the bottom. It's built in as well. So you just screw it on like a camera. But like your phone, when you're taking video, it doesn't have that. No thing where, (laughs) I mean, phone, you can be pretty shaky when you're trying to do a video with your phone. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. How big is the monopod when it's folded up and compact? How tall is it? I would like to say um, two feet, a foot, I think. Okay. A little over a foot, foot and a half maybe. Yeah, definitely so, could sit, could fit in the stroller. Mm-hmm, for sure, like an umbrella. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. What other tips do you have? Do you have other ones on your list for us? Mm. Not so much to make it better. I mean, yeah, really not so much. We're, we're in the hunt of a new video camera right now. Are you? So that's, yeah, that's our, um, our next, you know, major purchase. So. Yeah. I, you know, I've, I've looked at the videos on your site and I never would have guessed that they were all shot with flip cams and an iPhone. Yeah, they're, um, they're HD flip cameras. Mm-hmm. That's really great. And I mean, when you're, when you're doing family memories and stuff, really, that's all you need. I agree. You don't have to have the fancy equipment and go all out because then you know what? It's really hard to like drag it out and make sure you you're using it correctly. And I just say really like just make it user friendly. That's why I really love the 
um, camera on the flip phone. I mean, the camera is amazing, really. Right. On the iPhone? On the iPhone? I, or the... On the, yes, I'm sorry. On the iPhone. Yeah, it works really well. Um, it's just a, the stability is probably my my biggest gripe. I'm not a real steady hand. <laughs> not either. <laughs> either. Yeah, we just use, um, we realized that our the video that we could take with our little Canon PowerShot is HD and it looks just as good as a video camera. So we, we, we have never take our video camera anymore, anywhere, ever. Good. And so we just do all our video with our on our point and shoot. And then recently we've been starting to do it with our iPhone as well, because it like also amazes us that when we get home and watch it, we're like, look how good that looks. That's just on a phone. Like Mm -hmm. it looks great. Mm -hmm. So I don't hesitate doing video with my phone, you know, but again, just same as you guys said, it's the stability isn't quite there, but as far as like the video looking shaky, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm getting better at it. I think hopefully, I don't know. I want to try a monopod with it. I think that would be great. Yeah. I'm thinking. I also have video on my, um, my Canon 60D does video and I've done quite a bit of video with that as well. And it works, it works great for me. That sounds nice. Even if you didn't have your monopod like down on the ground, even if you were just holding it, I feel like if you could get the iPhone attachment, you could still hold it. I, I feel like I could hold a, a stick more, <laughs> more steady than steady. I could hold my phone, you know? Well, and it's yes. not, your hands aren't right up against it right. too with the shaking mm-hmm. that we have naturally kind of in our, I think so too. I think it would be more steady. Well, and then you can also lift it up if you're in a crowd. So I've been known yeah. to like hold it eight feet above my head. You know what I mean? And kind of point it down and you can, if you can see your, um, your, your viewfinder or, you know, the, the video. Yeah. If you can see that just enough to make sure that you've got what you want in the frame. Yeah. Then, then that's all you need. Cool. Yeah. I've thought of on my SLR cause I have the view, you know, that I can pull out and twist and move around oh. and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that's, I was thinking next time I go, um, to Disneyland or Disney World, I want to do the fireworks and use that to get up above everyone's heads mm-hmm. and then still be able to see if I can see mm-hmm. and make sure things are in focus. Yeah. Because that's, that's tricky. I'm going to have to read up on how people are doing that because <laughs> that would be the tricky thing. How are, you, how are you getting everything in focus when it's up that high to make sure? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, the flip camera just focuses it automatically. Right. So I don't know. So your regular, your video camera that's on your camera, that you have to focus that, or right. well, you have to push the button down to get it to focus. Oh, geez, really? Yeah. Oh. But and that's why I wonder how it would work. I bet you there are some people listening though that know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and have done it. And so, mm-hmm. if you're <laughs> sitting there talking to me right now, telling me what I need to do, it please come post in the show notes mm-hmm. so that we all know. That would be great. Come share with us your wisdom and knowledge. Mm-hmm. So yeah, okay. How do you balance doing still photography versus video? How do you decide if you're going to sh- take pictures or shoot video? Well, that is certainly the question of the day, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how do you guys, how do you, how do you balance? I mean, I think that's a question for everyone. What is, what do we all do? Yeah. I, you know, I don't do a lot of video yet there. And then there are certainly some times I've looked back at pictures of things that I wished I would have done video, mm-hmm. but I'm not doing enough video yet that I'm to the point that I wish the other way around. And there, you know, in different programs, you can actually take still shots out of video. Correct. Hard to do it the other way around though. Yeah. On your phone uh, or on an iPhone now with the new iOS that you can, while you're videoing, click, if you, if you are noticing something awesome happening and you want pictures of, there's a little button you can push that will take um, pictures while you're videoing. That's cool. Wow. Um, which I, it's hard to remember to use it. I have to admit, like I, I, I did the other day, actually I was, I was videoing Scarlett playing and she was being super cute. And I was like, okay, I want a picture of that. So I had to like think, okay, hold the camera still and try to push that other button, you know? So I could do it, but it, it at least it's possible. I don't know mm. that it's the easiest thing to do, but then, um, I guess what we do is we've learned very quickly since we've had Scarlett that we 
really love video of her. Like we love pictures, but there's just something special about going back and watching video. And so, mm-hmm. um, we learned that on our Disney trips, especially we need to work more on taking more video. Cause we, it's something we really enjoy once we get home. So we've been trying to be good about getting video and photography. So like what, we'll try to like, one of us will be in charge of video. Like I'll say, okay, Josh, you take the video. I'll take the pictures of this. Or, you know, one person does, does one uh, or the other, but it's also hard because if you're taking Scarlett up to see a, a character, she's so little, she's not just going up by herself yet. So mm-hmm. one of us is taking her and then we're hoping the photo pass guy is taking the pictures. And, you know, right. Josh is videoing. So, you know, it's this big paparazzi uh, situation. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they, you know, have a million cameras going at once, but I don't know. It's hard to know whether we should just just do the video or just do the pictures or I don't know. We try to do one of each or if like we're in a big group, then it's great. Cause I can be like, okay, you know, to my mom, you just, you take pictures and I'll do the video and then Josh will take her up, you know? So it's, it's easier once we're in a big group, but when it's just the two of us with Scarlett, it gets a little tricky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I, there's a lot of things, just like you said, with the kids as they're growing up, I was the post that's on capturing magic today where I'm talking about memories of my youngest playing in Goofy's yard. And I was thinking last night as I was posting that, I wish I had video of that to see her and hear her little voice because she's changed so much. That was three Mm -hmm. years ago. And so she's changed a ton. So when this show posts, it'll be, we'll tell people to go back and look at the November 12th. Yeah. Because it won't be today. when Right, it won't be today. It's the November 12th post. Yes, you're right. Mm. Um. And that's, I was wishing I had video of that. So I, I've never, I've never been in a situation where I've taken video and wished I had more pictures of it. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. I regret having that video probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. And um, I think Britt, you were talking about your husband does the video sometimes. Like a lot of dads, if you, I mean, if you have a gadget guy, kind of a husband, um, I feel like a lot of dads like to do video. Yeah. yeah. You know, I they kind of have. So, yeah. Um, so basically, um, when we are doing our family videos or whatever, I think my husband takes on the video role, um, or I do. I mean, we switch back and forth. Um, and then if we're all together, all of us sisters, our big family, then Jessica or Tracy, my other sisters, they're definitely on the photograph, um, photography, you know, uh, post for sure. (laughs) And then, um, also about kind of who does what in our family, like you all, you just have to delegate, you know, just have everybody. I mean, your kids are really young now, but, um, well, my son is 12 and then my nieces are older and they're using their phones, their iPhones, and they're, um, taking awesome pictures and Instagramming them. And, you know, so it's, it's really, fun for the kids to get involved. And then, you know, like my son will go up over to Jessica and say, look at this shot or look at this. This is magic. I mean, that's adorable when your kids start taking pictures. Yeah. That's a whole new thing. And, um, even, um, Tracy is, she gives her youngest her phone all the time and says, you know, okay, you know, go see what, shoot what you see or, you know, whatever. And, um, they come back and they love to do it. It's like an assignment and it's fun for them. And, you know, that's a, an interesting thing too. Maybe while you're waiting in line to, you know, have your kids be occupied at the parks, you know, great idea. Great idea. So. And seeing things from their perspective mm-hmm. too, which changes. Yeah. And I will say that, um, one of my, I don't have a lot of tips as far as doing video in the park. Cause like I said, we are trying to get better at it and do more and learn more and be better, better videographers, I guess. But one of the things that we've learned through watching our videos from trips is that our, well, my favorite videos are just the random moments that like just walking along between rides or mm-hmm. walking out of the park after a long day, like we'll, I'll just get the video out and you know, say hi to each person or whatever. And just like seeing that image of like family walking together. I know it seems simple, but like, I'm just, this one I'm picturing in my mind is my dad has one of my nieces on his shoulder and we're just like walking past Honda Mansion. Like, I don't even know where we were going or doing, but it's just them walking and laughing and smiling. And it's just a really short little clip, but I love that image of 
of that memory and it's, it becomes more, so much more vivid because I have that little video clip of it. And it's just a random moment. Like I don't even remember why we were videoing, but it's so cute. And then one of my other favorite videos that we, that I took was we were just walking out of California Adventure after a long day and it had been raining. It rained. I mean, it just dumped rain on us the whole day. So we were all wet and tired and we had just seen, we had just been waiting for World of Color for like forever and it, it never happened because of the weather. And so we're all just walking out and my brother is like dancing in the rain to this music that was on and it was just so funny. So I whipped out my video camera and got it on video and it's just silly and funny and doesn't, you know, it's not one of those obvious video moments, but I, it's my favorite. So my one, my, one of my biggest tips is just to re- video the random things that happen, the random moments. Mm-hmm. I agree. That's all. And I, the thing that's so great with a video is being able to capture the sight or the, yeah, the sights and the sound. Yeah. The sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Put you right back in that magical moment instantly. Yep. It does. Yeah. Mm-hmm, for sure. So do you do much editing after Becky? No, I really don't. I mean, <clears throat> on YouTube, there is um, a section of YouTube that uh, you click on edit after you've uploaded the movie or the video, you, um, click on edit. And then from there, there's several different menus like info and settings. And that's where you have the, you can put your, um, the name of the video or the title, they call it the title of the video and then the description. And you just kind of like type whatever it is and then tags, which you want to tag it, you know, if you're at the park, like tag it with Disneyland and, you know, Mickey Mouse and, you know, whatever you've got going on. Um, and then in the section in, it is called enhancements. And that is, um, like where you trim it down so you can trim the beginning or you can trim the end. So you can trim off the beginning or the end, but then there's another section of it that's called video editor. So that's different than the edit section. And this one's called video editor. And that's where you can like, splice it together or I I mean that's like an old-fashioned term I don't know what they call it now but like you can take two videos and put them together or you can take one video and cut it up into different pieces does that make sense yeah where tell me where you're finding that how you got to in YouTube oh okay I didn't know you could do all of that in YouTube yeah it's Mm -hmm. editable in YouTube Mm-hmm. Well, that's because you girls are Mac girls. And I have to say that Jessica, <laughs> when she edits with iMovie, it's phenomenal. Like, it's amazing. I love it. Um, I would probably recommend that over the YouTube editor. But if you don't have iMovie, then then that's what I do when I'm doing the YouTube yeah. Have you um, used videos. iMovie stuff? I have I, never. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Britt. <laughs> I have not used um, iMovie yet. I People that listen to the Digi Show know that I have a love-hate relationship with my Mac. <laughs> so <I'm asking. laughs> I, I need to get in there and, and play around with it. I, um, and I found it kind of tricky to edit videos that are shot on my iPhone in any program, even on the Mac. Uh, without changing the file format first, and I and that's I need to try it in iMovie and see if I don't have to change the file format hmm. first because it flips them, it rotates them. Yeah, iMovie is super easy. It's really user friendly. Like that's the thing I love about it is that it's it's amazing. Like Becky said, like you can do phenomenal things with it, but it's just super user friendly to me. It is at least hmm. I I haven't used it a ton. But when I have used it, I've just been really happy with it. Yeah, I did download it. <laughs> That's a start. That's it, a it is a yeah. start. Yep, it is. So, but I, when I was, because I was editing some videos a while ago, working on some stuff, and I downloaded iMovie, and then, because you have to buy it, right? It's like 20 bucks or something, right? No, it comes on your... Does it come on it? Yeah, it comes with your Mac. Okay, I'm thinking of something else that I bought then, I guess. But anyway, I... Yeah, I haven't. I went back to what I knew, which is a much more complicated program. And it's crazy that sometimes complicated programs are easier for me to understand than little ones. But I will try iMovie and I'll report back and let you know how it goes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So is it, when you do... So, uh, sorry, Brittany. When you do 
iPhone movies in iMovie. Does, does it rotate them, Bunny? I have not edited an iPhone movie in iMovie. Okay. Yet. So I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, no, she's going to ask me. I, I haven't tried it to do an iMovie or iPhone movie yet in there. But um, do you mean like it rotates it if you take it sideways? It wants to move it back to up and down? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it wants to make it wants to move it so that it's in portrait mode, and so then people are flipped on their sides. Yeah, um, I don't know. I haven't I haven't edited a a fun oh, movie. That's interesting. It does it in any program that I've tried to. So what I've had to do because on Capturing Magic when I posted those videos about uh, m when I was getting character autographs on the iPhone and the iPad, uh -huh. and when I posted those videos, I wanted to edit them a little bit, cut off the beginnings and ends, just trim them. And I had to bring them onto my Mac, change the file format, and then move it back over to my PC. But I tried a couple different programs on my Mac, too, and had the same problem. So, but I'm going to open iMovie here because it is on my Mac, and I'm going to open a video, and I'll let you know what happens. I was also going to ask if you had tried to edit. I, I know that I have found that sometimes it's easier if you're, if you're really just trimming, if you have tried trimming it just right in your phone, like with, right. Uh, just using your phone to do that. Um, no, I did not, but I know you can, I've done it before, but I don't, and I don't, well, okay. I didn't think of it because actually these videos were for my sister that were in Dropbox. Mm. Oh, gotcha. So they were and, on your phone. Yeah, and that's what I found tends to be the bigger problem. When it's on your phone, it's easier to deal with for some reason. Like with Becky, if I was uploading directly from my phone to YouTube, I think it would be easier and it wouldn't turn them crazy. Or you do you do upload directly from your phone to YouTube, Becky? No, I haven't yet. I do okay. it. I put I download it first and then put in there. And then it doesn't rotate them. Um, I don't think so, but you know there's a certain way to hold it on your phone that it won't flip, I think. Do you know, do either one of you know? I, that's, um, I know my sister was holding it horizontally and we, but I honestly, I've had problems with it anyway, the camera has been held oh, and it's anyway. just, yeah. And it's just the file format mm. from what I've noticed, but I'd be interested to know what you found. I feel like if you're taking landscape photos, I feel like you have to have it turned so that you're taking the picture with your left thumb. Okay. Huh. I haven't, well, I had to see, I haven't edited it after, but interesting. I don't know. See, I don't know. Okay. In iMovie, there's a setting when you're importing and it says iMovie for iOS project. So I bet if I start that, ah, that it, it won't do it. It'll just, it'll know which way the camera was because they that. are meant to work together. And then I did also want to mention that on an iPhone, you can get the iMovie app as well and be able to edit it in your phone. And I haven't used that myself, but I have seen other people's projects that they have just put together real quickly in iMovie on their phone using the app. And it, it's like amazing. It like blows my mind, actually. That sounds, I mean, that sounds like what I want to start doing. That sounds yeah, incredible. Because you can just, you can just download the app. I think it's free, right? And then um, be able to edit your movies. I'm sure, I'm sure there's other apps as well that you can edit your videos in your yeah. phone that are probably even maybe better, but I just don't know about them. If anyone else knows even a better apps to edit movies in your phone, you should maybe let us know. But I know that you can do it through the iMovie app as well. Yes, I downloaded the iMovie iPad app, and it was paid. Uh, oh, okay. And it, it was kind of expensive for an app, if I remember right. Um, I don't remember how much it was for sure, but I know that it was like 5 to $10 range. Because, see, when I look it up just here on my phone, it just, you know, has the install button. But that probably means because maybe Josh bought it before. If, yeah, if you're on <laughs> so the same account, they're connected. So to me, yeah. it looks like it's free, but it's probably not. Right. Mm -hmm. I was going to hurry and look it up as well and see if I could figure out how much it is for sure. Um, well, as far as editing, like whatever you're using, I just know that the more often you use it, you know, the simpler it is. Like whatever you're picking. I mean, if I go between two months without doing anything, I have to open it and relearn everything. I feel like, yeah. you know, you're just trying it to start all over again. Right. So, 
that's the only hard thing. And it's just like with taking the videos, like if you take them, the more often you take them, the better you're going to get. I mean, it's just practice and then editing, same thing. Just the more you do it, it the easier it'll become. Right. right. Exactly. Um, I was going to ask you, Becky, that I don't use, I don't upload to YouTube a lot, so I'm not real familiar with how it all works. But now when you edit it in YouTube, are you able to save those edits to like in any, any way to your computer or is it just, that's just editing it for the post of whatever you're posting? That just saves it for, um, the chan you know, on your channel. So right. you've got it in your YouTube channel, yes. but you don't have it like edited in any way on your own hard drive. No. Okay. Got it. Oh, okay. I'm dragging and dropping this. Yeah, I have, so I have three or four MP4 movies on my hard drive and they're all shot horizontally and some of them are turned and some of them are not. That's huh. a mystery. Yeah. And so I went in and I just, I did a right click, get info and I changed them all to MOV files mm -hmm. and was able to, or maybe it was the other way around. See, I'm not being very helpful for people. <laughs> We're doing this on the fly here, people. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I think I actually changed it to MP4. I think it was, no, I think it's shot in MP4. And then uh, I changed it to the MOV. Anyway, I changed it and then I was able to edit it and it was all fine. Yeah, it must be shot in MP4 because those are the ones that are kind of sideways and crazy. Mm -hmm. The other ones, yep. Okay, it was shot in MP4 and I changed it to MOV. So... That's the biggest problem that I've had with iPhone videos is being crazy like that. So, yeah, they were shot horizontally and bringing it into any of the video editing programs and even playing it on my either of the computers, my PC or my Mac, it wants to rotate it the other way. So Weird. I have never done that. Really? Uh-uh. Because, like, we watch our videos from our phones all the time just through our mm -hmm. Apple TV or through the computer or whatever, and they don't rotate. Like, they're just the way we shot it. Are you streaming them from your phone, though? Um, Sometimes, but other times we'll just, you know, watch them through iPhoto or whatever. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I was glad, uh, Becky, that you mentioned in the beginning about turning the camera because we want to take our pic videos on your phone, just holding your phone like you normally hold your phone. But we've learned that through watching them on our TV, like – you have to sort of get in that mindset of whenever you take a video, turn Rotating, your camera. Yeah. So it, it, it's like a mental game. And now I'm used to it. Now, every time I take a video, I automatically turn it, but it was a process to kind of like get used to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always regretted it <laughs> when I would like get an up and down video. I was like, Oh, it's so small and tiny. You can't really see. <laughs> and then people watching it too. They're like, Oh, turn the camera. Yes, it's yeah. painful, huh? I've done that myself. Because I have a hard time remembering. Because usually when I shoot photos, I just keep it in portrait yeah. mode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah. So, okay. Um, sharing on YouTube. How do you decide what to share when you're doing family stuff, Becky? Um, we don't have a lot of family stuff on channel. Um, I mean, like, you know, I, I just think that as long as you don't have any hangups about being public with your kids, because I know a lot of people, um, not in a negative way, but I know a lot of people are very unprotective. So if you're protective and you're worried or you're concerned about stuff like that, then keep it in private or, um, there's another one called, Oh, what is it called? Maybe I can find it. Um, but there's different, um, ways you can, can, um, save your videos. Like you can have it in private or you can have it in, there's different settings, unlisted or public. Oh, okay. In YouTube. Okay. Mm -hmm. In YouTube. Yeah. So if you put it on unlisted, what I want to say is no one can see your video unless you invite them to see it. Okay. This is private. So private is you add email addresses mm -hmm. or YouTube channel names to people that you'd like to see. Okay. And then unlisted, anyone can view it if you send them the link to the video. 
Okay. So if you want to share it with your family, then you just say, oh, look at Sophia the first or, you know, like right. whatever you're talking about. Um, and then you just send them the link and then they can view it that way. So, so they have, have to, to have like a direct them. link in order to access it. They have to have a direct link. Yeah. If you put it in unlisted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we just, we, I mean, we do pretty much everything public and, um, you know, like if people, I mean, I never have thought to myself, oh, people don't want to see that or, oh, people are going to be bored of, of my child doing this or, because, you know, I mean, I think it's adorable. And if people don't want to watch it, they won't watch it. But, you know, I th- I don't think there's a limit really on what we choose to share or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's some great tips. I want, I would like to get into doing more videos at the parks, especially mm-hmm. like I said, and doing some for capturing magic and uploading them. Yeah. Capturing magic needs a YouTube channel. We have one. Well, yeah, we do have one. Well, we need to have a lot of videos on it. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. We need to. Do you, do you guys um, ever think about taking pictures of your child at the same spot in the park? throughout the years have you heard about doing that we do, idea we do that okay Scarlet, so we do that we have a spot that we take the same picture yes. we, we we've like know right where to stand we know where to sit oh, her and, we take fun. and we've only take she's been three times and so we only have three of them but even just looking at those three it's like it blows us away like how fun it is to see how different each picture and she looks. so the same goes with video, right? Because you'll want to see her voice and you'll want to see, yeah. you know, her moving and her mannerisms. And yeah, so same thing, you know. Great like, idea. A little video every time. So she, have you have you done that, Becky? No. <laughs> it's a great <laughs> idea, though, huh? <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. It's a great idea, of course. But no, we haven't. I mean, well, we haven't done it at the same place, but... Um, We've done like, well, I think while we're waiting in line, um, like how old are you and what's your favorite ride and what, you know, that kind of a thing, uh-huh. that uh-huh. kind of a documentation. Yes. Um, yeah. That's cute. That is Yeah. Good. What's your favorite snack? I mean, it's fun to ask the kids questions and the zanier the question, the better. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, like what, well, what's your favorite food? And then they'll say, I don't know what they'll say. They'll say. Um, corn dog. And what, what do you like best about corn dog? And what do you put on your corn dog? And, you know, like just all of those crazy things that kids come up with funny things that they say. The details. Mm -hmm. And then they change too. Over the years, you can see how those answers all change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The favorite ride question especially will change. Fun. Is the, is they add new attractions to your kids? Is it always the newest thing? No. No? Do they have other favorites? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and I think Nick is like, I think he's, I think he's been pretty steady. He loves Space Mountain. I think that's probably his, yeah, I think, I think he always says Space Mountain, that he loves Space Mountain the best. (laughs) That's fun. Okay, any other tips that anyone wanted to add or questions? Well, I was going to ask Becky how she, like, do you how does your family enjoy your movies after as far as like, do you watch them on your computer? Do you make DVDs of the trips? Like, do you, do you, do you find that you watch your videos as a family? Like I feel like, um, growing up at at least, you know, with the big old camera on your shoulder that dad had, you know, (laughs) the home movies that we Mm -hmm. didn't really get those movies out very often and watch them as often as, as we probably should have just because it was a pain, I guess. I don't know. I just want, I, I, I'm always interested in how we can enjoy those movies after. Like what's well, the way, what, how do you guys do it? DVDs. Like I was hysterically laughing when you said that, like, uh, no, I do not. Would I love to? Heck yeah. <laughs> but do I? Oh my gosh. No, I am so not the person for that. But I mean, that's, that's the goal. Like that would be in a perfect world. I would make DVDs and we would be able to watch them, but no, that never happens. Um, like my uncle, he's really big. Like he's his family always is taking family video wherever they are and then he is so good because he goes home he puts it all together he edits it and he makes them movies and then like I know my cousin growing up would always say I want to watch the Disneyland movie and so they put in these home movies of them watching Disneyland and they just watch them as if they would watch any movie 
And I just thought, gosh, that is so awesome. I want to be more like that. Because I know Scarlett like would love that. it. If, if, we, if I had a video, I could just pop in for her of, you know, our, our whole trip. Yeah. We definitely watch um, our videos a lot of the time on the TV. We'll plug our laptop into the TV. Mm-hmm. We'll just set it on the shelf. And then we'll just watch directly like that. And we we for sure watch them fairly often, I would say. A couple of times a year, I would say we watch, like we went on a Disney cruise and we watch those videos all the time. Um, yeah, it's like you said, it's like, let's watch this, like as if it's something, as if you're watching a movie, you know, let's watch our vacation on the Disney cruise. Um, we also watch, my husband and I, We a week ago, we were gone, we were traveling, the two of us, and we were um, in the airport, and we had an hour to kill, and we just watched our, um, we watched videos of us in Vegas, videos at Disneyland, and videos of the Disney cruise. So those were the three subject matters that we watched, and they're on our phone, so... Mm. Um, yeah. So How you're just fun. watching them off of your phone. Yes. Right there. And when, when you're watching them with your family, when you plug your laptop in, how do you have them? Do you have them organized a certain way? Or are they just sort of like in your, you know? They're just in a folder. Yeah. Yeah. We just watch you them. Just, yeah. They're just a movie folder or whatever. Mm-hmm. We just organize it by subject. I mean, by vacation. Mm-hmm. So, so you pull they're not together. Yeah, they're not even connected together. It's not like one big, long movie. It's just each video separately. Each cool. video as it was taken. Yeah, exactly. Like, mm-hmm. it's so not even high tech. We just, you know, we just forward it to the next one. Although, ideally, yeah, I mean, how awesome would it be to have a DVD? That would be. <laughs> <laughs> or even a movie. I agree. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Did we hit everything, I think? I yeah, so. I think what all I just want to say is don't try to be perfect. I mean, don't think that you're going to make a DVD. If you don't make a DVD <laughs> of your home movies, nobody cares. I mean, I'm here to tell you it's okay to not even put them, you not even name them. If you don't even want to name your videos after <laughs> you've taken them, who cares? No one's going to know. It's just the fact that you have them and you can watch them and you don't have to be high tech and everybody should just you know, save those memories. I mean, you just can't get that back. You're right. As long as they're in a way that you can enjoy them, then that's fine. Like I do, I'm notorious for trying to do too much and like take on too many things and then feeling guilty for like not having that DVD, you know, Mm -hmm. where I really just need to keep it simple. Like it's exactly right. Like who cares how it is? As long as you can, you're, you can watch them together as a family, as long as they're not like hidden down in the dusty depths of your hard drive where you never can get to them and enjoy them together. Then, you know, as long as you can see them and you can watch them together, even if you're sitting at your desk watching them together, you know, or whatever, that's, what's really important. (laughs) Totally. I totally agree. Yeah. Yep. All righty. Thank you. Becky, for being here. We appreciate it. I'm excited to get going on some video for sure. So let's do our picks with Pixie Dust. Brittany, do you have a pick? I do. Um, My pick with Pixie Dust today is a Tumblr blog, and it's called Disney Bound. And a lot of people have probably heard of it. I I feel like I'm saying that every time I do a pick. Maybe I need to make more innovative picks. (laughs) (laughs) It's called Disney Bound. And I'll put the link in the show notes. It's just disneybound.tumblr.com. And what it is, it is just meant to be an inspiration for you to pull together outfits um, that are inspired by Disney characters. And she, the girl who does it, the blogger, her name's Lindsay, and she um, just kind of pulls together cute, ins- inspirational little outfits, like fashion things that are all inspired by a different character. And she does all kinds of characters. Any any Disney character you could think of, she she does it. Like I was just looking through the other day, and she has anywhere from like. Queen Eleanor from Brave to Captain Hook to Mulan to Vanilla P. Von Schweetz to the Cheshire Cat, like anything. I mean, um, and they're not all like she does like girl characters with boy outfits and boy outfits for girl characters. And I mean, it's just any kind of inspiration you could think of. And it's so 
fun to look through and think how you could maybe pull your outfits together to be kind of uh, inspired by a Disney character. And it's called like when you do it, when you dress that way, they 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 call it Disney bounding. So, mm, like if you fun. dress like a Disney character, you're Disney bounding. <laughs> And I will say, since I found this blog, when I went to the parks the last time, I looked around and I totally saw people Disney bounding and noticed it. And I was like, guarantee you, I guarantee you they're Disney bounding. Like they know the blog. It's a verb. (laughs) Yeah. Like they, they're familiar with it and they're, they, they're doing it because of this blog. Like it was so fun to see people Disney bounding. And then she will post other, like if people send her pictures of them Disney bounding in a park. Like she'll post it on her Tumblr. Like there was one recently I saw of a guy who was dressed. He was Disney bounding as Donald Duck, and then he was with Donald Duck at Disneyland. Mm, so fun. she posted. That. It was really cute, really cute. And I don't know if you're into fashion and outfits and you know stuff like that, then you'll really love it. I love that kind of stuff. I don't have a lot of cute clothes, and so <laughs> as I'm trying to Disney bound myself, I'm struggling because I don't really have anything cute, but. Um, I want to get more cute stuff and be able to be a better Disney bounder. And I'm and I because I knew I was picking this today. I'm Disney bounding today for the very first time. Oh, fun! Ooh. And yeah. what? Who are you dressing yes, as? Tell I'm us. Merida today. So I'll nice. put. We can post. I'll post a picture or something. <laughs> you can see that I pulled together <laughs> an inspiration of Merida for my outfit. And it wasn't. I didn't buy anything special. I just kind of looked in my closet and thought, like, okay, who could I be? And so I kind of pulled it together as Merida. So. <laughs> and it's silly it's so silly but it's so fun yeah that's the thing I, I'm not familiar with that site so you see you say everybody I've seen tons of stuff pinned on Pinterest mm-hmm. yeah it's big on Pinterest people post uh, pin a lot mm-hmm. yeah but I have not ever gone and checked it out so it's really cute and she does like um, little um, contests where people put you know can send in when they were Disney bounding and then people can vote on their favorites and um, she yeah. And that's all from the Tumblr page? Yep, it's all from her Tumblr. Oh. And she also sometimes, once in a while, she'll do makeup, like makeup, a makeup uh, collection that she kind of just puts together that was inspired by a character or something like that. How fun. And she mentions that, oh, I was going to say also that there's a really great post that she did semi recently of Disney bound essentials, like things that she uses again and again for different characters. So like if you're, if you are going to the store to buy something, then, you know, if you, if you get a, a pair of yellow flats, then she uses those a lot for like anywhere from like Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Daisy Duck, you know, the, a, a good yellow, a good pair of yellow flats, like works for so many Disney bound things. And well, then, huh? Yeah, Belle. Yes. yes. And she said that the uh, the thing that really makes a Disney bound outfit are the accessories. So if you have, if you, you know, if you watch, she said, just go to like Claire's in the mall and just look at things that could be used for Disney bound that would make an outfit kind of more, a little more Disney special. And I have to say that even though I, as I go around today, no one in the world will ever know that I'm dressed or that I put, picked my outfit because of Merida, but I know. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> happy like I kind of today like oh look I'm cute and Disney and it gives me like that little Disney little Disney spirit in my heart all day (laughs) a little bit of magic yeah fun and I get to sort of kind of know that and think about it all day so it's fun that's super fun I can't wait to check it out Mm -hmm. it's really I will tell you because she posts a lot and so it's always in my RSS feeder and so every time I like click on it and I see that there's new posts I'm like yes and I go and look through it and I spend a lot of time there just like scrolling because there's so many and it's so cute right just Star Wars ones because of the whole Disney Star Wars acquisition thing yes so there's a ton of Star Wars ones that are super super cool it's nerdy. I feel like a nerd talking about it right now. I'm geeking out. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You're, <laughs> you're not cool. here. I love it. Yeah, not here. You're not a nerd. That's totally acceptable. I just bought um, a necklace with, I don't know, like four keys on it. They're like skeleton keys, like those old fashioned keys. Uh-huh. And um, I brought it home. I showed my husband. I was like, look at this necklace. He was like, oh, yeah, that's nice. That's cute. And I said, no, don't you get it? It's my Alice in Wonderland necklace. And then he was like, oh. <laughs> so cool. That's totally something that would be on a Disney bound Alice outfit for sure. Yeah. How so fun. now I'm the same way. Like whenever I wear it, I'm thinking like, oh, this is fun. You know, I'm Alice today. Right. Yep. 
That's fun. Okay, my pick is actually something I found on Twitter. Someone that started following us, I was checking out his Twitter feed, and he has some family videos from his wife and his son went to Disney World. He has a 17-year-old son. And I had so much fun watching their family videos. (laughs) And I would have to say that it's not always fun watching other people's family videos, but... Uh, he, he's edited his in such a way and added some cute fun effects to him that I think they would be great inspiration for everybody. And I really enjoyed watching his family interact with the characters because they always kind of, it seemed like maybe they had decided ahead of time what they were going to say and what kind of, you know, things they were going to, they just really played along with the characters and teased the characters a ton. And it was fun to watch. So mm. yeah, I'll link up to his, his Disney World trip and family movies. And I was really impressed that the 17-year-old son played along as much as he did. <laughs> so, because teenagers don't always do that. Mm-hmm. Without yeah. bribery. Maybe they did bribe him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, let's go around and remind our listeners where they can connect with you online. Brittany? Um. Let's see. Uh, you can find me at BritishDesigns.com, and that's British with two Ts. And that's where you'll be able to find my blog and my digital scrapbooking shop as well. And, um, yeah, we have our big Black Friday sale coming up on Black Friday. <laughs> and there'll be uh, so lots of fun stuff going on at the site, so definitely come over and check it out. All right. And this show will go up to, Becky, I think we forgot to mention that it'll go up on the 20th, this episode. Sounds so, good. Yeah. So tell our uh, listeners where they can find you. I am with my sisters at DisneySisters.com. That's our blog. We have a YouTube channel. We have a Facebook page. We're on Twitter. Um, we're on Pinterest. You can find us everywhere at Disney Sisters. Hey, Becky, did we pick you for a pick? I mean, did we skip you for a pick? Uh, you did you a pick, did, didn't you? Nope, you didn't ask I, me. <gasps> how rude of me. You should, how rude of me. Yes, do your pick, please. Okay, well, I do. I did have a pick ready for you. So, Hey, um, let's hear it. I'm so sorry. Well, don't be silly. We, we're juggling a lot here. Uh, my pick is uh, momtv.com. So I don't know if you guys have heard of that. It's found. It was founded by Maria Bailey, and she's also known as um, Mom Talk Radio and Blue Suit Mom. And basically, what this is, it's like an online TV network for moms, and it's by moms. So mm. a lot of the show. There are some um, weekly shows that are produced by moms and, um, you know, like they could just be in their kitchen talking about a great recipe or, um, fashion tips, uh, you know, like pretty much you name it. Um, the other part of this channel is that you can share your own videos on momtv.com. So yeah, it is fun. So basically if you have like an awesome birthday party idea that you, you know, just did or are going to do, um, you know, you can upload it and share it with the other moms. And, um, same thing, like, you know, if you made something really great for dinner, you can upload it and share it just straight from your, um, your video camera or your, your laptop camera, you know, just from the computer right there. I think so. these days, anything I made for dinner, my family would think would be worthy of posting on <laughs> mom <laughs> TV. <laughs> it's so yeah. cute. That's fun. I want to check that out for sure. So it's more, uh, it's a little less YouTube-ish, right? It's more. Definitely. Because you're not going to upload your family videos there, it Correct. sounds like. Well, I mean, if you're sharing a, a moment, if you're sharing a, you know, special Time. I mean, there's there's a Disney section. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Did I forget to mention that part? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There is. There's a Disney section. So um, very cool. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why I go there <laughs> to tell you the truth. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Send me a link, and we'll link up to that. That's fun. Yeah, that's I super will. Fun. Okay. Now you can tell us. Finish telling us where they can find you. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, I yeah. The, actually, I was done. So just any. Any um, social media forum that you are on or want to go to and you want to look for us, we'll, we'll just be there under Disney Sisters. And the blog is DisneySisters.com. 
That's perfect. And you're, you're often attending fun events all over Disney fun events. Yeah, we just did um, the premiere of Sophia the First, which is a um, show on the Disney Channel, a movie, and then it'll be a series on Disney Junior. So yeah, that was a good time. We did a lot of video for that. So it'll be on the blog um, very soon. Or actually, it'll be on the blog as you're listening. So go check it out. Yeah, yay. Okay, and we want to mention to our listeners that if you have questions or comments about this show, please head over to capturingmagic.me and you can post them in the show notes. Or if you would prefer, you can email us at mail at capturingmagic.me. So M-A-I-L at capturingmagic.me. And we will do our best to either answer them on a show. We would like to be able to do a mail show with some of your questions. So go ahead and send those in and we will answer them and see how we can help you out or if you have comments share them with us we would love to hear them so let's see we also want to mention our sponsor the dailydigi.com if you're interested in learning about digital scrapbooking you can definitely learn at the dailydigi.com and you will also find the best deal in digital scrapbook supplies there as well as well where you can get fifty dollars worth of product for seven fifty a month so Let's see, capturingmagic.me. We have new stuff going on all the time, and we're almost ready to start uh, releasing a product that, or announce a product um, that you'll be able to grab that will help you in capturing your magic memories. So we're excited about that. So exciting. It's so exciting. Ow. Yep. Steph, that was a tease right there. It was a tease. It was a <laughs> tease. Yep. So it's it's very exciting. It'll be really exciting when it's done. I'm going to have a party, I think. I think you should. Yeah. You should. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you for being here, everyone. I really, really appreciate it. It's been super fun. Yeah. And we will see you next week where we will be here capturing magic. Mm-hmm.